Child, it is finally, finally the weekend. Online savage, real life average. Is it just me or was this week extra ugly? It, it could, if this week was a human being, it couldn't look in the mirror without cracking that shit. I'm so happy, so happy that we're over that shit. Maybe we can get a couple days of rest. I'm done with it. And But today's Friday, we're gonna celebrate um, with you going over to patreon.com. <laughs> you going over to patreon.com slash Adrian Expression and signing up. You already know I have all the goodies there for you, including podcast episodes. Go over there and check it out. Now, speaking of things that need to be checked out, Normani, I need to check out your schedule. What's going on, Normani? Normani, Normani, I saw a couple days ago, and honestly, more recently than that, I think, but a couple days ago, you put up these pictures, you put up a picture of your ass in the studio, I'm just like, all right, now sis, this mic is extra big and we need for you uh, to be using it. We have been waiting so long, and these earphones are extra large so you can hear exactly what's going on in the studio. We've been waiting. We've been waiting for your ass to come through. Um, and now what I'm seeing is that you're gonna be at this savage, fancy show uh, with a whole bunch of performers on October. I think it is October 2nd, yeah. Some of the people are gonna be there, Big Sean, Rico, Nasty, Chica, all the girls are gonna be there. Um, and I I don't know what you're doing. I don't know if you're gonna be giving us a little I don't know if you're gonna be giving us a little bit of that choreography, but whatever it is, I do wanna see it. Uh, hurry your ass up. If you want me to personally speak to your team and get their asses right on together, I can't. I'm not sure if they will listen to my non-factor ass, but I'm gonna at least try. If you need some help, nobody, to you know, get the ball rolling on this album, whatever the fuck it is that you're doing, let me know. I'm, re I'm here for you, okay? <laughs> so really quickly, Lil Nas X collaborated with this British designer, Christian Cowan, and uh, he is giving me all types of Pink Panther in this one. Uh, he's giving me a little bit, I was just talking about Rico Nasty, he's giving me a little bit of Rico Nasty in this one. And he's giving me, you know, jacked. Your private pictures have been unlocked with this one. I love it, very cute. So there's a really cool side to this collection or collaboration that he did. The co this collection is supposed to be basically um, a benefit for the LGBT community, especially the community in, in Atlanta. They said that all of the collection's proceeds will benefit Atlanta's black queer youth through a nonprofit fund launched through the Loveland Foundation. So I thought that was pretty cool. I mean, you can't really go wrong with creativity and giving back at the same time. Also, I think he shared some of these pictures that kind of relate to his upcoming music or upcoming projects. So we're gonna keep our eye on Mr. Lil Nas and see what the hell is going on. Now, someone who I've had my eye on for quite some time is Miss Flo Millie, okay? I called her Flo no skips, Millie, because that latest project is just, it gives me all the life that I need. Flo Millie is somebody that you play with your, your you have to play her with your windows down, completely down. Uh, maybe you're driving on the highway or something, or maybe you're riding through the city, you wanna drive by slow so niggas can really uh, listen to whether you're playing Pockets Bigger, whether you're playing like that bitch or in the party or attitude or not friendly or weak, whatever it is that you're playing, you wanna, you wanna drive by real slow, put the windows down, uh, make sure you turn your bass up so that you can really feel, so niggas around you can really see uh, the type of energy that you're gonna be serving the universe, okay? <laughs> That's Flo Millie for you. And so she just released a video, joint kind of thing for Send the Addy and May I, and I'm gonna tell you something right now, Miss Mamas looks good. Miss Mamas looks so good. Let's just let's just cycle through some of the looks. We already know she got the flow, right? But she's also serving you some looks at the same time. I love this. I just love her aesthetic. I love them, uh, you know, shiny ass, big ass rims and them fucking earrings. And it's just, uh, the, just at the attitude, the cockiness of it. I love it. I love it. I love this. This man is sitting here like, if she don't get off my goddamn hood so I can see where I'm driving. <laughs> 
I love this damn pink and these flowers and shit. This mama's looks good. I love this long ass braid that she has here. It's just obnoxiously long. Um, and she had her girls, maybe she was at somebody's apartment complex or parking garage or something. She told them girls, you know, stand right here on them steps and we're gonna kill this choreography. We're gonna dance, we're gonna shake our ass, we're gonna do what we have to do, okay? Now, the my most favorite look, I, I think that, that I've ever seen her in probably is is just this orange with this bandana and this mini skirt. I was like, bitch, and and this hair. It's just it it really gives me uh, the revitalization, the rejuvenation that I needed. I'm glad they saved that look for the end of the video because to me, like I said, that's my most favorite, favorite, favorite look ever. Um, and when it hit my TV screen, I was like, oh, bitch, bitch, you know you look good. You know you look good. I love to see the girls winning, especially when they have uh, work ethic like that, especially when they have, you know, a cute flow like that, especially when they give you something to watch. They they have that X factor. They just, mm, they exude that energy. I, I, I want her to keep coming with it. I can't wait to see how she develops further and like what her next project is gonna be or where she's gonna um, take wh whatever this is and how it's growing, like where she's gonna take it. Um, that is the beauty of artistry, can't wait to see. Now speaking of artistry, we gotta talk about Lady Gaga. We gotta talk about this 911 video, right? So when I first heard this song, like without the music video, I thought it was cute, it was like a cute song, you know, it's fine, whatever, but I don't think I really took the time to listen, listen to the lyrics, or you know, maybe I did, but I didn't realize fully what exactly it was that she was talking about. She talked about my biggest enemy is me, and so I just wanted to, um, read into this really quickly before we get to the video. So she, so earlier this year, Gaga said that her rapid rise to fame did not give her time to learn how to cope with the trauma and symptoms of PTSD that she faced immediately before coming a pop star. A lot of this was due to the multiple sexual assaults that she, you know, went through when she was like 19, I think. So this video has a lot to do with like mental health and the fact that. So, so let me let me just say this. So she said, I all of a sudden became a star and was traveling the world, going from hotel room to garage to limo to stage, and I never really dealt with it. Um, Gaga said that in addition to therapy, um, antipsychotic medication helps a great deal to manage her symptoms, and without it, she would spiral very quickly. So Papa 911, so like all of that. So when I, when I saw the video, I had to, when I saw the video and I was confused a little bit, I had to like, go to Stan Twitter. I'm like, let me see if some of these girls can dissect it. And that's what prompted me to like look into what Gaga went through, right? So heavy underscore Stan on Twitter uh, was one of the stands that wrote a whole thread of stuff explaining what is going on in the video. But as you can see here, like there's one part of the video, most of it where she's like dreaming, almost like hallucinating almost but at the end of it, it switches to reality. And so you can see here that Gaga is imagining this whole thing. She takes antipsychotic medication, which the entire song is based on. Here you see the bloody ankle is symbolized for a beautiful ankle bracelet. So here you see the similarities between the two different scenarios in the music video. So one on the left where she's dreaming and it's beautiful, but on the right, that's her. That's when she's in a car accident. There was this guy in the dream in the beginning of the video, he was hitting his head on a pillow. I was like, what the hell is going on? Like, why is he doing that? But then if you switch over to reality, this is what's actually going on. So even when she was like rising up or about to fly uh, in the dream sequence, you see this guy pulling on her leg. He's trying to bring her back down. That represents how later on that same guy who played a paramedic in reality was pulling her back down to reality, was saving her from dying. Um, so it's really cool. And you can even see more similarities here, dream sequence or hallucination versus reality. So I'm glad I went and looked for some explanation because I was like, girl, what? <laughs> At first watching, I was like, what the hell is going on? It seemed like something that was disorganized and was very random, but when it switches over the end, everything made everything made so much sense. But even then I had to go online and, and like, I was like, what the hell is she trying to say? <laughs> but I think that is one of the cool things about art. Um, something that doesn't make sense to you today might make sense to you tomorrow. Or something that makes sense to one person, period, might not make sense to someone else. Or an artist's interpretation of something can be so unique to them that you're just like, how do you even think of doing some shit like that? 
<laughs> and so yeah, that's an explanation if you were looking for one. And I say this just because I know I definitely need one. <laughs> and she was really putting on a performance at the end. I was like, damn, did somebody actually hit Gaga with a car on set? <laughs> like, shit. So bad news for everybody who is on TikTok and everybody who loves TikTok. Uh, on Sunday, apparently Trump says that, you know, what uh, it, it's gonna be banned. Uh, you get that ass on out of here. Now, apparently, if you already have it on your phone, you, you can still use it up until, I think, November 12th. But the fact that there's not gonna be any updates or anything on the app is, you know, the user experience is probably gonna be horrible leading up to that. So, I think the Financial Times broke this story. They said, Oracle and ByteDance, which they're the owners of TikTok, the companies, they are in talks now with the administration to have TikTok's global business being spun out into a separate US company with an all American board and a security committee headed by a person with US government security clearances. So Wilbur Ross is the US Commerce Secretary and he said, we have taken significant action to combat China's malicious collection of American citizens' personal data while promoting our national values, democratic rules-based norms, and aggressive enforcement of US laws and regulations. Um, so of course this comes as Trump is trying to take a stronger you know, stronger stance against China. I just find it so hilarious. The fact that I know Trump is still pressed that he got dragged by TikTok teens, but I find it even more crazy that he is this, you know, adamant against China. Meanwhile, like he's just like, Rus Russia can do whatever the fuck they want. They can do whatever the fuck to they want to our election. They can meddle. They can come in here and spread misinformation in the country. They can obviously, they're taking motherfuckers data too if you think they ain't. Obviously, they, like, come on, please. I just find it funny how he's just like, he's gonna act like this big ass, pink ass elephant of Russia is not in the room and focus all that shit on China. Very um, unsurprising to me at this point. But yeah, I think that it is actually kind of scary because if TikTok, if this was able to happen to TikTok, it's like, what the fuck is next? What's next, boo? And honestly, I can tell you what's next. Uh, recently, he said, today I'm also pleased to announce that I will soon sign an executive order establishing a national commission to promote patriotic uh, education. It will be called the 1776 Commission. Our youth will be taught to love America with all of their hearts and souls. That shit sounds dystopian and it sounds scary as fuck. It sounds like Handmaid's Tale, Miss Mamas. He also dragged the shit out of the Smithsonian for pushing critical race theory and he called it child abuse in the truest sense of the word. So it's giving, it's giving very much dictatorship to me. It's giving dictatorship, so. Um, I hate it here. Just, just want to let y'all know I hate it here. I can't stand it here. Ready to, ready to evaporate. Ready to teleport on out of here. It's really giving Nightcrawler tease, giving X Men tease. On that note, thank y'all so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you check out patreoncom Expression. I hope you have a good weekend and a good goddamn evening.